guys and welcome to Girl Grows Wild. So today we are talking how to use a wood burning stove. So after you make sure that you've emptied out your ashes because you do want to start with a nice clean fire um, and usually there's an ash bin underneath here. The first thing you want to do is usually go in through your wider door and you want to make a small fire. So you want to make a little fire in the back of the of the firebox and what that's going to do is that's just going to help to create a draft for when you add on your larger firewood. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is that they do not crinkle or twist their paper. Kitty wants to get involved here. Um, that they do not twist or crinkle their paper and then the paper just kind of like sticks together. It doesn't burn well. So you definitely don't want to do that. And the second mistake that I see when people are starting the fires is that they'll put too much uh, like heavy wood, big, huge logs on there and kind of suffocate it. You have to remember it is a fire. It is an art form, as they say. And um, so this is really just what you want to start with. A couple pieces of paper crinkled up. And then next up, you're going to want to use some smaller pieces of kindling. So these are just small pieces that we have chopped up. And I like to make a teepee, essentially. So you just want to put some of these in here. Again, we're not going for a huge fire. We just want to get a little guy going, get a little draft, and get some coals going. Okay, so once you have your primary air supply open and you have not a kitty in the fireplace... <laughs> so once you have your primary air supply open, you have your secondary air supply cracked lightly, and then you also have the flue open, you can go ahead and you can start your fire. So I always suggest using a wand of some sort just because I don't really like getting in there and getting them dirty, but you can use any type of lighter, obviously. And then you just light it in a couple spots here. And again, we're just kiki. She loves the fireplace. It's so bad. Um... So we're just going to close this up now. And that's what we want. Just a nice little fire that's going to get those small pieces of kindling going so that we can then add our larger pieces. And again, this is also going to create a draft um, just so that it'll help those larger pieces burn better. So while our fire is getting going, let's talk about different types of fuel or wood that you can use for your indoor wood burning stove. So you're going to find a lot of different information out there when you do search the internet. A lot of people obviously prefer hardwoods, but to be honest, there are some people that live in areas of the country where there are not hardwoods readily available. A lot of those people use softwoods and they claim that everything's fine with their firebox. The problem with the softer woods is they do tend to have a higher moisture content or a higher sap content. That's why a lot of the times you'll see in the stores like Home Depot and Value, um, things that are marketed as like fire starters, they're usually a very sappy wood. You can literally smell it like the second you pull it out. And that's just because that is what is extremely flammable. So honestly, I used for the first two years a lot of those um, fire starters. I didn't have any problems with the chimney. I didn't see any excessive crease out buildup. So really when it comes to what is the best wood to use, it's the wood that you have available. So you just want to make sure that it's dried out, that it's properly seasoned. Having those higher moisture contents, they can cause things to build up in the chimney. They can cause creosote to build up more just because those wetter logs burn a lot slower and at a much lower heat. Creosote essentially is um, really, just think of it as like minerals and other buildup that don't burn off in the fuel and then essentially they start it starts to build up on the lining of your chimney and then that's unfortunately a lot of times what causes chimney fires so really want to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to mitigate the creosote buildup but again the best wood to use is really whatever wood you have available so mainly I have hardwoods here so we use a lot of ash we use a lot of hickory we use a lot of maple those are really the trees that grow indigenously here in the area as well as on my lot so that's what we generally use however I have used some of those fire starters that you'll see at Home Depot or value um, and those do have higher sap contents in them but honestly again anything that you can use to get the fire going that's the fuel that you should use as far as paper you do want to try to stay away from like wax paper or like cardboard cardboard just doesn't burn efficiently and then the wax doesn't burn off so then it kind of again will start to like gum up your chimney system so you do want to stay away from that kind of stuff i don't suggest just like throwing all of your household garbage into here 
Okay, so now we're over here on the side of the firebox and this is primarily the door that you're going to use to load most of your firewood in. The front is good to get it started, um, but if you do have a side door, I would suggest using this to get those bigger logs in. You also have, this is that secondary control that I was talking about as far as the, the airflow, and you just twist it open or twist it closed. You have the flue lever right here, and then this is the lever. I always suggest try to never get into the habit of touching the handles even when this is not hot and i'm just starting a fire i normally will still use the handle i just always use this so we're going to open this here and you can see the fire is going the paper's all gone the small kindling has essentially really started to catch fire and if you look in there close enough you'll see that we're starting to get some coals so i think we're ready to add a couple medium-sized logs so now we're out here in the garage and this is where I keep my firewood. I am not crazy about keeping a lot in the home just because unfortunately I have a snake in the house. Yes, it was the middle of March and I'm pretty sure that it came in um, sandwiched maybe between the bark because I have heard that the snakes will crawl in between the bark um, to try to stay warm and they do love wood piles. So, so you wanna make sure you have your wood pile close by. And when I say medium pieces, we have an array of different sizes of woods here. And I like to start off first with the kindling and then this is what I would consider to be like a medium piece. It's got a little bit of, you know, it's got a little bit of body to it, but it's not as skinny as the kindling and it's also not anywhere near as big as like one of these large rounds or even the, the quarter split firewood. So I'm gonna grab a few of these. So this is what I grabbed here and we're just gonna go throw this onto those little logs and get a little bit of a bigger fire going. So if I open up the fire now, you see we have some coals going. So I'm just going to place these medium size guys that I got. So I'm gonna stick with the TP style just because wood tends to burn faster and because we are trying to get this thing up and running. And there you go. So now that the smaller and medium sized pieces of wood have caught fire, now we're gonna wanna go ahead and add on the larger pieces. So now that we have what looks to be some pretty hot coals beginning, um, what I like to do is take the handy dandy hook here and you just kind of want to spread it out a little see we got some nice nice coals down here all right yeah can we chop this guy up a little all right so yeah so you can see here we have some coals oh the fan is starting to run it's getting that heat now let's grab some big logs and throw them on here so this is really, I would say, like a standard piece of corded split firewood. And we're just going to pop this guy on. I like to start stacking these now in a um, more of either like a log cabin or just flat on top of each other. Just because I find that that uh, creates a more efficient burn. They essentially just begin to lower down into the coals. Now you do want to get this closed up pretty quick because once you put these new logs on, you're definitely going to start to get a lot of smoke as they begin to catch fire. So one little tip that I will share, but I'm sure that no manufacturers out there are going to suggest this. Um, usually with the drawer down here where you would keep the ashtray, this is a pretty good access point. You'll see if I open this instantaneously the fire will get super hot and that's just because that is like a wide open direct um flow for air and that's something i really don't like to use that just because it's not meant for that but if you are struggling to get a fire going you can always just crack that a little bit and it's going to give you a little bit extra airflow once you have this going for about 10 minutes, then you're going to shut the flue down. And what you're going to see is these flames are going to get a lot smaller. They're going to get a lot darker, but that's really kind of what you want. Um, in my case, this model has a catalytic converter. So when we shut the flue, it sends that smoke up into the catalytic converter where it's burned off again. And essentially it makes it a little bit cleaner for when it is emitted into the environment. But it also is creating almost like a second heat source from that catalytic converter, which is going to, again, just make the most out of the wood that you did put in there. So while we're waiting for these logs to catch fire before I close the flue, we're just going to go over a couple of things that I think are helpful. One thing that you definitely want to remember is never open the firebox without the flue open. So if you do close the flue, you definitely want to make sure you open the flue and then give the firebox a few minutes for that draft to take up. Two things can happen if you don't open the flue. The first is 
basically as soon as you open the firebox all of that smoke is just going to come bombarding into the house because smoke is always going to just follow the path of least resistance so you open the door and poof, it's just going to come billowing out and trust me even having the door open for two seconds is enough to just send smoke all throughout the home the second thing and the worst case scenario being is that you can actually get a backdraft so because you're opening the door and the oxygen is rushing in there sometimes the fire will literally creep out of the firebox that is a very bad situation to be in. So again, always make sure the flue is open before you're opening the firebox. The second thing being always make sure you're using a handle or a glove when you handle anything on the stove. I know even if you're getting the stove going, it's not going to be that warm. But for me, it's just the mental habit of always having either a glove or the handle. And that way I'm guaranteed that I'll never touch the stove and never burn my hand because these things get really hot. So I closed the flue and you can see here that the flames are starting to dwindle a little bit. You do want a constant flame, but they should be darker like this and, and much shorter, smaller. So that's really what you want for the fuel to burn efficiently. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, smash the notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one.